This is the new BMW M3 CS and it is to the M3 what the GT3 is to the Porsche 911. It's a sportier, more hardcore, more focused version, but it is more expensive than the standard G80 M3 xDrive by £30,000. And in this video, we're going to find out if the upgrades are worth it. I'm also going to tell you what's good about this car. You can be a little bit more relaxed about the risk of depreciation. What's annoying about it, you can get flickering of it. Take it for a drive and of course I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. The first thing you need to know about this new M3 CS is that BMW have reworked the car's ECU so that the engine provides more boost pressure. As a result, horsepower increases over a standard M3 competition from 510 horsepower to 550 horsepower. Though torque remains the same, 650 newton meters. You've also got the same eight speed automatic gearbox with the torque converter. However, they have tweaked the shift slightly so they're more brutal. And of course, you've got the same four wheel drive system. So how quick is this car when you launch it. Well, before we do that, just take in this carbon fiber bonnet. Isn't it lovely? It's got M on it there. You don't get that on a standard M3 competition. Anyway, enough of that. Let's launch the car. BMW says this car should do 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds. Let's find out the reality. I'm going to launch it. Oh my God, this just shot off like crazy. 3.13. <sighs> It's crazy. BMW have tweaked the chassis on this CS. So they've retuned the dampers, the springs, the anti-roll bars. They've altered the camber of the car as well to make it feel a little bit more responsive. It also has a huge chassis brace in the engine bay. This car has a 7,000 pounds optional carbon ceramics. They've even tweaked the stability control to make the car a little bit more playful. Anyway, let's see what those changes do to how the car drives. So, not what every competition is pretty blooming impressive, but this one definitely takes it up a notch. So I thought the suspension tweaks would absolutely knacker the comfort. I mean, the normal M3 does have a hard edge to it, but this doesn't seem any harsher. I'm actually using it in comfort mode for the suspension, which is what you need for bumpy British back roads, but it seems to deal with the bumps pretty well. And oh my gosh, it done half go around corners well. Absolutely amazing. Very stable. You can tell exactly what's going on beneath you. It's an absolute riot. And you've got so much grip that it just absolutely holds on in the bends. And then you've got all that traction to rocket you out of them. It's a nutter, an absolute nutter. You soon find yourself up the arse of other traffic. <laughs> it's just the way it is, because this is so capable. Now, what I could do is put the car into sports plus mode like that, but really, you don't want to do that in the UK because it just ruins the ride a little bit. It doesn't feel so compliant over the bumps, and you'll probably actually go slow as the car skips about. If we're in Germany, and the road was totally flat, I'd say fine, because it does keep the body a little bit flatter, but it's not worth it in the UK. Let's go back into comfort. That's where this car is best on these roads. I've got to say another change they've made is really noticeable, and that's the gear shifts. So they absolutely rock it home. <laughs> it adds to the sense of occasion in this thing. Whoa, it's fast. Yet you get a load of confidence from it because you can tell what's going on beneath you. That is in part to these seats. These bucket seats are lovely. You sit so low in them. The only downside is, is that the dash is quite high and this is quite a big car. So sometimes you can find it a little bit large for threading quickly down a country road. And really this is where you want to enjoy the car. And it does just feel a little bit like, oh, it's, it's a little bit big. Especially considering how fast it is, because you get up to speed really quickly in this thing. But overall, oh my God, what an amazing piece of kit. As well as being more aggressive to drive, the CS looks more aggressive due to some significant design upgrades. So you've got that carbon fiber bonnet with exposed carbon fiber panels here. You also have a more aggressive bumper as well, and you get the carbon fiber as standard. Plus there's this extended splitter there. You also get red piping around the grill and the M3 CS badging here. And you get laser lights as standard with yellow daytime running lights. Moving down the side, you have some unique alloy wheel designs. You can get them in bronze or this sort of matte gray effect. And the carbon fiber roof also has these little fins in them as well to just improve the aero. Now there is one exclusive paint color for the CS. It's not this lovely signal green. It is a sort of white. 
this is what it looks like. Meanwhile, around the back, there's the carbon as standard, which is an optional extra on the standard M3 competition. And of course, finally, the M3 CS badge. On the inside, the CS gets an Alcantara steering wheel with this red data head strip. You also get the carbon fiber bucket seats as standard and they have CS badging on them. There's more carbon fiber than in a normal M3 competition. Look, it's extended down here. And you have this little CS armrest there like that. You also get CS on the sills and you get BMW's latest infotainment system, which in some ways is good in some ways bad. For instance, now all the climate has to be done through the screen, which is a bit of an arse. Look, all of this don't like that much. What I do like though, is that you get a heads up display as standard, which if you put the car into M mode and track, then you can see the rev counter in the heads up display so that when you rev it, You can see the rev counter up there and it's really handy if you're drag racing the car because you don't have to look down to see when to change gears. Here in the back is just like a normal M3 competition, apart from the fact that these carbon fiber back bucket seats do give you more knee room. Also, the CS has red stitching here in the back, like in the front, which is unique to this car and this perforated redness here on the seats. And look, red on the headrest. Other than that, it's M3 like with the trickle on the seat belts. Always love that. Finally then, the boot capacity is the same as a normal M3. 480 litres, which isn't quite as large as an M3 Tourings, nor is a saloon tailgate as practical as the hatch that you get on the estate. And BMW haven't announced a CS version of the Touring yet. And that brings on to five annoying things about this car. All this lovely carbon fiber interior trim is a touch reflective. So when you're driving along, you can get flickering effect in it, which is a bit distracting. While these carbon fiber bucket seats are lovely, they're a little less lovely to get in and out of because of these high side bolsters. They make it a bit awkward. And here's a true story for you. I used to have an M3 with those seats and my partner Joe didn't like driving it because it was awkward to get in and out of. And I was planning on getting an M3 Touring, but she's vetoed it just because of the seats. The way this front splitter protrudes quite away from the bumper of the car puts it at severe risk of being clipped on curbs and you having a costly repair bill. Alcantara steering wheels instantly make a car feel more sporty, but they can soon get very grubby, especially if you're the kind of driver who likes to eat crisps from their groin while they're driving. In the past with BMWs, if you wanted to turn off the stability control, you'd press and hold the button for about three or four seconds, and then it would disengage. That doesn't work anymore. You have to press the button down here and then go onto the touch screen and press that button up there. And that's hard to do while you're driving, you know, at the point where you probably wanted to turn the stability control off. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the Colwo 5 core cool features. The M3 CS has a titanium back box for its exhaust for added fruitiness. Let's have a listen. Very nice. And doesn't seem like it's got a soft limiter either. Another rev, please. See? There are so many different parameters that you can set the car up to. So the engine, the chassis, the steering, the brake, the four wheel drive system, even put it in two wheel drive mode and the intervention from the traction control. And when you've set it up just as you like it, you can then record separate individual settings using these buttons here, either M1 or M2, which will give you quick access to whatever driving mode you've set up that you want to be in at that point in time. Yeah. Because the M3 CS is limited to 1700 units worldwide, and the fact that the M4 CSL is actually going up in value slightly, you can be a little bit more relaxed about the risk of depreciation compared to a normal M3 Saloon X Drive. And you know what? The uh, little CS pad is actually an ideal footrest. The top speed of the M3 CS is 188 miles an hour, which is a whole eight mile an hour more than a standard competition. You might be thinking big deal. Well, yes, if you live in the UK, but if you live in Europe where they do speed in kilometers an hour, this car actually breaks the 300 kilometers an hour mark. 
The digital image of the car that does matches the one you're actually driving. You can even see a little M3 CS badge. Plus, look, when I open the door, you'll see it from the top. You can see the carbon fiber roof and the carbon fiber bonnet. At the beginning of this video, I said that the CS cost £30,000 more than a normal M3 Competition X Drive. That's because the starting price is £116,000, which is quite a lot. Hopefully, the CS upgrades haven't ruined the car for that function because, you know, an M3 is a three series. Well, we're going to see what it's like at joining a dual carriageway. So, I'm just going to overtake the car in front. I'm doing 45, and where there's some space, I'm going to floor it and go past. I have to wait till we're past the cones, obviously. There's a lot of cones. Eventually. Here we go. Can I get past now? Floor it from about 50. Blimey. Even when the car is in like a more relaxed setting, it can still turn into an absolute monster very, very quickly. One thing I do notice is that when you're going quickly, as with a normal M3 competition, there is quite a bit of tyre noise. And the fact that the subframe is like mounted without rubber bushings to the back of the car, it does feel a little bit harsh sometimes. You get more vibrations in the cabin than you do in something like an Audi RS4. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. But you know, this car is still easy enough to live with every day. You can mooch about around town in here. The suspension doesn't break your back over speed humps. The gearbox can be nice and smooth and compliant when you're just in drive mode and you don't turn it all the way up to setting three. It's actually very impressive and I think you could quite easily get away with convincing your other half that actually you should get an M3 competition but really you need the CS because it's just that little bit better. So then what's my final verdict on the new BMW M3 CS? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid the M3 CS. What? Shock horror? I was saying how great it was? Well, actually, I think it's absolutely brilliant, but I bet BMW will do a touring CS and that will be the M3 to have.